Gojo's soul is put to rest, with the author confirming that the volume 26 cover art was supposed to be Gojo at his funeral. The author also said he was quite unhappy with his writing. I hate you, you always ruin everything! Gojo, who though everyone prayed he would be brought back, Gege sealed his coffin very early on. In fact, for the volume 26 cover, he wanted to draw a more clear death portrait of Gojo, but he again drew a blank. So instead, we got the classic reference to Gojo passing on to the next world by depicting it with the camellia flowers. Due to it being ambiguous, it gave room for hope that he could come back. However, Gege had always wanted to kill Gojo, and never were planned for his return. Even Maguna using Maharaga to kill him was decided from the very beginning. This is why we saw constant foreshadowing. With Sukuna's interest to Megumi in chapter 9, when the signs for Maharaga's existence was first revealed, to then actually being introduced to us in Shibuya, sealing the perfect counter to Gojo's infinity. We of course also had Gojo's own statement about how the previous 10 Shadow and the 6 Eye user killed each other off, and so Sukuna being the one to take advantage of this was all firmly set in place. With that in mind, it's pretty much confirmed Yuji will die too, as Gege doesn't play around with his word, and once he has an idea, he will execute it one way or another. But regardless, Gege also revealed more about how he wanted to switch things up within Jujutsu Kaisen, with 200% hollow purple being a prime example. This is because whilst in typical shounen battle manga, when two opponents face off, the actual battle doesn't start until the two combatants are standing together, almost like a boxing match. However, Gege is built different. As we all know by now, he loves when characters get the jump on another. And so, Gege revealed that the basic idea of Sukuno was Gojo battle is that there are actually no rules and that in itself inherently lays down the point about dishonesty. Essentially this battle was a full on scrap to the death and so it makes no sense for the two to wait until they were shaking hands and touching gloves. Thus Gojo kicked things off from far away because well he can. And again it's not like this fight was fair either way as Sukuna was using Megami's body with Megami's technique with of course all the memories and insight he acquired along the way. That being said, Gege's pragmatic thinking hasn't succeeded him in all aspects of the series, as there's a lot of things Gege believed he failed at, starting with time. It can be easy to forget that the entirety of the Jujutsu Kaisen story takes place in the span of just a few months, which is something Gege has realized was a poor choice and something to learn from. Gege also admitted that he felt that the culling games was a failure. Looking back on it, he revealed how he wished the ruling system was utilized more in battle. Like they had discussed the idea of adding rules midst battle using accumulated points to add extra layer of creativity and twist. But in the end, nothing happened. Moreover, Gege retrospectively agreed that he could have made a more like a tournament arc. Originally, when introducing new characters, he wanted to bring excitement for them beforehand by telling side stories. This is something he had done in the case of Sumiki, Hakari, and even Utah. However, if the culling games had adopted the tournament style, Gege mentioned that introducing new characters would have been clearer whilst also giving them more of a chance to be featured in the story. For example, one of the arc's biggest criticisms stems from new characters being introduced, fulfilling a role, then being made redundant. Furthermore, Gege explained how this could have opened the door for a Gojo retrieval arc. In spite of this, once Gege had settled on the direction he ended up going with regards to the culling games, there was no room for this as he knew the end of it would always result in the Shinjuku show down arc, which was always planned to be the final arc of the series. Nonetheless, Gege's ability to write characters is proven to be something he took pride in when we look at what he said regarding Nooya and Maki's relationship because he was cooking. When creating Nooya, he wasn't designed with the idea of contrasting Maki alone because like many things I mentioned before, it was always decided that Maki would slaughter the Zanin from the very beginning of the story who are renowned for the negative perception. However, that's not to say that Nooya was created just to personify this, as Gege tries to avoid creating characters just because they contrast with their protagonist counterpart. 
as by doing this too much, it can make the characters boring and predictable. This is actually a very clever thing to avoid, as it's one of the more common criticisms other shounen manga face. For example, My Hero Academia, which has suffered this fate with some of their characters, as a lot of their dynamics become too predictable simply because they exist to contrast somebody else. Whereas a character like Nooi's involvement in the story would still exist with or without Maki. Unfortunately, someone who wasn't supposed to exist was Kenjaku. What? Because whilst the return of Ghetto as a fake was always planned to be a thing, his actual identity wasn't decided upon until the Shibuya arc began. Meaning, Gege left what turned out to be a totally monumental aspect of the story pretty late. That's right, it was never Kenjaku at first, but rather Yuki. Yep, she was supposed to be the mastermind behind it all. This explains a few things, such as why she may have helped push Ghetto down the path he took, and why she wasn't present during the majority of the arc as she was supposed to be. That revelation blew your mind, then make sure to hit the like button and watch this video next for more peak fiction.